Hey, good morning, everybody. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here this Sunday morning in Surfside, California, sandwiched between Seal Beach and Sunset Beach. And here I find myself with, oh, it looks a little ominous, I guess, but it's pretty spread out. Supposed to get some rain this afternoon and then some more this evening. And then perhaps Monday might be a clear day. But when I say a lovely morning and gorgeous, look, it's flat calm out there and the waves that are coming ashore are not all that big there's a bunch of surfers down this way but it looks like a great morning it's a great morning to have a cup of coffee and it's a great morning for the morning briefing good morning my friends oh my god is that good what an event yesterday cca put on and far too many people for me to mention i just want to say thank you to each and every one of you well, I'll mention the lovely couple at the end of the show who tried to help me find my phone. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. The gentleman said, I feel like I know you. And, you know, I, I get that a lot, and that makes me feel so good about what we're doing here at Freeman Adventures. Thank you and to everybody else, including the folks from CCA who put on a great show. 17-year-old kid upstairs in the Evi Tackle store. I want to send him my best. I met this kid and he couldn't have been more polite, more nice, just a wonderful kid. With kids like that, our future in the U.S. is really, really bright. All right, enough of that. Really fun times, great event. Thanks to all of you who came out. Down south the border in Cabo San Lucas, Stripe Marlin continue to entertain. It's dropped off a little bit. It's not as wide open as it once was, but at times it can be. So every day is a little different, but in most days you're gonna see them if not catch them sprinkling of dorado throughout the area especially down south around the golden gate bank and our friend sean morgan on the wild insect down there operates out of san jose del cabo it's a little ways from cabo san lucas but they virtually fish the same waters and that's a fast boat so he can get around and really get it done up there in the san quentin area now we're talking 140 miles down the baja coast you can drive that, you can jump on a boat and get down there. I'll explain when we get to San Diego about that. But down there, they continue. The local guys, especially Pongueros and other guys down there with six packs, catching good amounts of yellowtail. A lot of it is on the yo-yo iron. Remember, yo-yo iron refers to the type of iron as well as the technique. So it's a smaller, heavier jig that you drop deep and then you wind on it fast until it loads up and you got one of those high, hard fighting jacks on there. And the way you set the hook is never by rearing back. It's always by just turning the handle. In this case, my coffee cup. But, and, and much faster and with much more enthusiasm than I just displayed to you all. So good fishing there. And of course, Red's Lings, all the great bottom fish that provide such excellent table fare. Uh, 120 miles down the border. Now I'm gonna talk about San Diego based boats. They were down there over the weekend, and this is still the weekend, but yesterday we got some reports in. Good rock fishing, a sign of yellowtail, nothing wide open on the forkies down there, but getting some yellows on that yo-yo iron, and really great fishing for bottom stuff. Great big lingcod in some cases, in other cases just legal lingcod, but vermilions and all kinds of other stuff. And they catch some nice white fish down there in that neck of the woods also. So good fishing. Now we get back across the border where I am headed tomorrow morning. I'll be in Ensenada for some fisheries meeting, talking to government officials about promoting a Baja fishing tournament that is coming up, finding about a little information more about Guadalupe Island for you all. Anyway, I'll be headed down there. And down there, still good rock fishing going on. Blackfin sport fishing, they are located out there on Puna Banda and they do a great job. I love fishing with Victor and all those guys. And they go down and fish that Soledad bank and they're catching sheep's head, whitefish, vermilions, boccaccio, nice links, really good fishing going on down there in that neck of the woods. So fine fishing going on. You know that rockfish season is closed there in SoCal, but San Diego based boats, it's never closed. And that's why the premier today and Monday through Friday, I should say, tomorrow is going to run trips across the border. So they're fishing in Mexican waters where rockfish is legal. So they do like an extended half or three quarter day trip. They're out of H&M. The Premier's a nice boat. I think other guys down there are doing it. So keep that in mind. 
if you want to catch some rockfish. Now, the alternative to rockfish here in SoCal is sculpin. And I'll tell you, they are a great eating fish. It's a great excuse to get out on the water today or any day for that matter when the weather is good. Incidentally, our weather in terms of wind is going to be beautiful except for a blow Tuesday morning. It'll be brief. It will be inshore a little bit and more offshore. And then after that, flat, calm, beautiful weather again. So we're just going to have that one little blow. Sculpin fishing remains good up and down the coast. And sand bass fishing, you know, it's okay. Sometimes it's pretty good. Gale Force had some good sand bass fishing yesterday. They operate here out of San Pedro. Uh, nice fishing for them, LA Harbor. Uh, good bite, and they mixed it in with some good sculpin. Good sculpin and um, sand bass and calico bass just sprinkling in there. Maybe a fish per rod in most cases, maybe way below a fish per rod. But again, they're lucky because they have that sculpin to fill in, and some guys even fish the whitefish and do quite well. So we mentioned the Gale Forest City of Long Beach has been doing the same thing. Walt on the Monte Carlo has been doing the same thing, and Marina Del Rey Sport Fishing, they, they've had some really excellent fishing, including some twilight bass trips. I think that's probably your best opportunity, that twilight bass bite. Remember, if you can get away with 40 pound, you want to fish it because there's a lot of structure there. So fish the heavy, but make it fluorocarbon. It's abrasion resistant. And you're going to need that. We love www.opsonusa.com. It works really good. Put in FA at checkout, and Greg Brown will send you a love note as well as a free gift. You might, uh, well, I guess there's no way to let him know, but if you want a perfume card, just keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully, he'll do that for you. So, Floro, and then anywhere from two to three ounces of weight for most of the areas that are being fished right now. It can be a lead head, it can be a sliding egg sinker, it can be a torpedo sinker, all of those will work. A big hook, like a 3.0 to 5.0 size hook, should be in really good shape for catching some bass. And this is really lovely weather, as I said. It's gonna stay that way until Tuesday morning, and by noon, the winds will start to dissipate if the forecast is correct. So hopefully that is the case. Some excellent long range fishing, you know, every once in a while, we start to hammer on those big elephant tuna. It's weather dependent. We've had a little weather down where they're fishing down the Baja coast, but the Red Rooster 3 put on some nice YFT, and that is good news. So yellowfin tuna and wahoo are the name of the game. They had some good wahoo fishing down there also, and it's not just the Red Rooster Independence. All the long-range boys are getting in on that kind of action, and that is great. If you don't mind, hit that like button, share these videos with a friend. We deeply appreciate that when you do that. And of course, subscribing and ticking the bell really makes a big difference. In March, I'll be at Bass Pro Shops, and I'll be doing, I think, six individual podcasts back to back to back, and I would love to see you there. We had a huge crowd last time. I think it's March 11th. I'll put up the graphic here. So in case I'm off, which I probably am, uh, you can see. But come on out to Bass Pro. I'd love to meet you. Take a seat. It's such a great place to shop. You'll be able to do that. You'll be able to watch the podcast live. There's going to be free giveaways going on. It's going to be a lot of fun. Bass Pro Shops. And don't forget the show going on at the Orange County Fairgrounds. That's where I work occasionally. In fact, I worked there last night. And I'm going to work there this morning. And then I'm heading to Mexico tomorrow morning. But all the shows, Bart Hall and uh, PCS show, all of them, you should attend. Once again, my uh, thanks to everybody who made me feel so welcome yesterday at the CCA event. It was a great one. I thank you all very, very much for always supporting Freedman Adventures. It means so much to me. And I hope to see you really, really soon. What a gorgeous day. Take care, my friends. Mm-hmm. slide to a stop here we got bluefin crashing on fish coming underneath the boat yeah he just hooked one coming through coming through leaders here corner corner boom way to go man Black struggles to get this big yellow to the surface and then mark sonoda has his hands full big cortez bank yellow
time, buddy! This is keeping a jig straight up and up and down. Yeah. Uh, with these rods, they help you pull on fish a little bit better. It's kind of <clears throat> kind of a lot of fish this year doing this on the pump. Got the acid wrap rods. Yep. Helps the uh, helps the line get up a little bit better. I also got my line marked every hundred feet on my reel, so I know how deep to put the jig and where to work the water column and everything like that. 